Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today I wanted to show you what my February card class looks like. This is the Fancy Flora Book Binding Fun Fold online card class for February 2023. And I know that that is a mouthful. Um, I am going to be showing you a card that I made live. Um, and you can make this card on your own. But if you want to take the class, there's going to be six cards as part of the class. Um, all of my card kits, there will be six card kits, are pre-cut and scored, including the die cutting. What you do is the stamping, the assembly, and the gluing. You would get a um, online pre-recorded video that you could follow along with the tutorial for your cards. You would also get a PDF tutorial of instructions, measurements, photos, and then I always list like the full amount of products that I use in all of my classes as part of my PDF tutorial. And in addition to that, you're also going to get $21.50 in product as part of your class too. So what that means is you will get a quarter pack of the Fancy Flora Designer Series paper. You will get a pack of the Iridescent Pastel Gems. You will get um, the Grow Grain uh, Pool Party Ribbon. And you will also get um, a quarter pack of the 6x6 I think it's fine shimmer paper is what it's called. So it'll be cut down to a six by six size in three shades. So you will get all of that product in addition to getting the pre-cut and scored card kits for the Fancy Flora class, your pre-recorded video so that you could do your class when you want, and your PDF tutorial as well. So you have those measurements and instructions if you decide you want to make multiples of these cards on your own. So if you have any questions um, for me about registering for my card class, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, you can email me. You can direct message me on either Facebook or Instagram and I would be happy to talk to you about it. Registration for this class is open from February 2nd to February 11th, 2023, and the card kits will ship out no later than March 10th, and I now have um, made that date uh, so that I have the proper amount of time with ordering the product and shipping and everything like that after I close registration to give myself enough time to be able to cut and properly pack and then properly mail all of the class kits. So um, sometimes it doesn't take that long, but I do give myself 30 days from the date that registration closes to complete the class. You will have an option to add on products to this class if you want to. If you just want to purchase the class, it will come with that $21.50 of product included in the kits. But if you want to add on a bundle that I've used or if you want to add on a suite, you will have the option to do that when you're going through the registration process. Um, but it's optional. So totally up to you. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is we're going to jump into the replay from the book binding cards that I made on my um, Facebook Live the other day. But they are so cute. So this is one of the cards that I made on the live. And this is another card that I made on the live. So really, really love how they turned out. This is a look at that fine shimmer paper here. Um, really, really beautiful paper. Uh, I have to say this is a stunning, absolutely stunning suite. Um, I, honestly, it's just, it's so pretty. So let me just give you a look at the cards here. So just to be clear, this is one of the cards that will be made in the class. Here's another look at that fine shimmer paper in gold. Here is one of the cards that will be made in the class. We have this card here. So we have both the horizontal and the vertical 
book binding cards to send. Isn't that cute? And then we have this one. This one features that phenomenal die that cuts an entire just beautiful floral image here. And this takes a lot of time and detail work. So for this piece to be cut for your class, that's pretty incredible. That's rare. That's not something that I can offer all of the time. Um, but, you know, February is a special month where we have a celebration still happening. And we really want to feature all of the beautiful product from this new mini catalog that we have um, January to April 2023. So uh, if you don't already have a catalog or if you need more information, let me know. And then here's the sixth card. So even though I made this on my Facebook Live, this card is going to be part of the class as well. So like I said, six cards. We have one, two, there's that fine shimmer paper again. Here are those iridescent pastel gems, just to get a look at that. Three, four, five, six. And you can see we do have some pops and detail here with our stamping and with our die cutting. And then we have some that are on the simpler side. So every time I do a class, I really do try to give you a range so that you can really experience the product that we're featuring in that class. Um, and so that you have different levels of, you know, card making here. So you could do something that's very clean and simple, or you could do something that is a little bit more intricate um, and involved and still equally beautiful. I think that whoever your card recipients are, they're really going to love these cards. I just think they are so beautiful. So there you have it. Um, again, this is the February 2023 online card class that I am offering. This is part of the Fancy Flora Suite, um, and I am calling it my book binding fun fold class because that is the tutorial that I showed on my live but I loved it so much. I wanted to do a whole set of cards and this set of cards will be offered to you. So when you see this um, scoring here, that will be done for you, but you will do your stamping, your assembly, and your gluing. And my card kits for my classes do come with the medium sized envelopes as part of that class. Okay, thank you so much. And let's go ahead and jump into the replay from Tuesday. Whether you are watching live or in the replay, be sure to say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I love to hear from you. This is our mini catalog, January to April 2023 from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to go to pages 14 to 17 here. And we're going to just walk through this really quickly. So if you're interested in the entire suite of products, that number is always over here on the page where they have all of the beautiful samples that they've created to give us some inspiration. And then over here, we can take a look more specifically at the bundles. So we have two different bundles here. We have two-tone flora, where we have the stamps and the dies. And then we also have something called something fancy, where we have the sentiments and then these really versatile pieces. I really wanted to do this. Um, I wanted to show this to you. I wanted to cut this myself and show this to you. This is also compatible with the mini. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you that as well. Um, and I'm going to go through this fine shimmer paper, these gorgeous, gorgeous iridescent pastel gems. Um, I've been using these actually. I just used uh, several of these on my paper share cards. They're so beautiful. Um, we have the pool party ribbon and then this really artistic, stunning um, designer series paper pack. So let me just go through it um, and show these to you. So the main two things that I want to point out about these bundles is that this one is all imagery and this one is all sentiments. And of course, this could be a showstopper in terms of a card base. Um, but I want to go through these specifically because I think that this is going to be really useful for our crafting. <clears throat> so um, I you know, didn't get a chance to make all my usual charts, but I did get a chance to work on this a little bit. So here is a chart of those dice. Okay, so the way that this is set up, we have two nesting pieces that could potentially look like this. 
So if you would want to cut or use them individually, this is these are the two sizes that we have here. If you want to nest them and have the frame, this is what it would look like here, which I just, I love the nesting and the layering. I love when they do that. Um, this one is actually three. So we have like three, I, I would call them, let's just say like label, um, something they call them something fancy but I would call these like a label die almost so I did one in each different color just to distinguish the size but this is what it would look like if you were nesting these together and then we also have this cut here we have the smaller and the larger which the impression could be that they could be turned into tags or they could be whole pieces um, on their own like this backing piece is here and then we also have this piece we have a hexagon here and then we have this so we have some visual interest with these um, sort of like angled edges so really beautiful versatile dies and then if you want to cut um, some design into these they do have three options they have this tulip option this little branch little like tree branch option and then we have this like little teardrop option where you can cut these in and let me show you um, what I mean by cutting them in. I have my dies right around here somewhere. Of course, I'm always saying that, right? Let's see. I think this is them or something fancy dies. So you can see this will cut out an entire piece, but if you want to cut in one of the images, you can do that. So you would just nest this right in here when you're running it through. And for those of you who've either already picked up the starter kit that includes the mini stamp and cotton emboss machine, or if you're thinking about getting the starter kit that has the um, mini cut and emboss machine as part of that um, options offer, then like I said, these are compatible with the mini as well as the full size. So you could cut every single one of these dies with the mini if you would want to. Now, for the other set of dies, let me show you this. So, this is from Two Tone Flora. Okay. And these are basically all of the flower cutouts where you can cut out the, um, the stamp. And let me see if I can give you the stamp set here. Show this to you. Okay. So, we have this two tone stamping that you could do this two-step stamping where we have our solid color and then we layer on a darker color for some detail and some visual interest and it ends up looking like this okay just depending on the colors that you are doing let me see i i grab let me just grab a few here so i was trying to play with the different color categories um, but really, really beautiful two-step stamps. And then, of course, you can cut them out with the dies. Okay, so, and this is on um, Very Vanilla card base, actually. So, really beautiful there. And then we have, like, the little, um, the leaves and this sort of leafy, I don't know what to call that. I want to call it a plant, but I can't think of the right word right now. But you could make some really beautiful full, like um, stamps and images with this. I really haven't even had a chance to like take that out for a spin yet. And this one, oh my goodness, look at that die. So I have seen a lot of people using this. Um, I've seen a lot of different cards and ideas and inspiration with this. It is really stunning. There is so much detail in this and it's really hard to do this justice on camera but yeah so this die in particular is a lot of work and it's something that we call well you, you might have different words for it weeding or um, what have you and there's the um, take your pick tool where you can put the little brush option on here and you can use a little scrub brush to get all these little pieces out what I did was I did a little experiment and I put the adhesive sheet on, on the back of this one. So when I get a new suite, I really try to play with as many of the products as I can just to kind of get a feel for it. So when I'm talking to you, if I need to do something special or a tip or something like that, I can share that with you. So this is what I wanted to try on camera with you to see how it worked. So <clears throat> with this piece, I did not do the adhesive sheet. And you can see, 
like it's kind of coming up in some areas because I don't have glue on every single, you know, bit of this. You could either sponge the glue on or use your fine tip glue, um, however you would want to do that. But if you use an adhesive sheet, if you stick the adhesive sheet on the back and then peel it off, you basically turn the die into a sticker. Now, whenever you have to poke out all of these little pieces, right? And some of these pieces are gonna fall out on their own, but some of them, especially these small pieces here, they can be where you're gonna spend your time. So if you are gonna spend time on a die like this, then you really wanna make this the focal point of your card. You don't wanna cover it with a bunch of things. But I wanted to see if the adhesive sheet would make it easier to remove some of this. So drum roll, we're gonna try it together. It may or may not work. So I'm gonna set this aside. I just wanted to test it out with you um, and then I'll play with it more off camera when I have time. We're gonna go through the designer series paper here in a second, um, but let me just take a look at this. So I'm gonna start in this corner here and I'm just gonna take my time with it and I'm gonna start to pull. And if you can see, when you do that, you can start to see some of these pieces come out, but I'm seeing a little bit of resistance here. So let me, I'm gonna go up the side and I'm gonna start pulling. Now in this top corner where a lot of the pieces are coming out, meaning we have just a thin area left, it's, it's actually pulling away really well, okay? So that's doing a lot of the work for me and that's what I'm looking for, right? Smarter, not harder type of thing. And you could do this in whatever way, you know, works best for you. But when I was near that large flower, there was a little bit more resistance there. So I would say, take your time, okay? Don't force it. You might need to get the pieces going on those larger bits. But that is pulling away a significant amount of the pieces and that is making me really happy. So I, I would say, based on what I'm seeing here, if you have the adhesive sheets, use them with this piece. Um, if you have the time and you enjoy the weeding and you're just sitting down and watching a show or you're hanging out with your friends and you enjoy this, you know, this is something that's like, like coloring, you know, um, and that's, you know, peaceful and it's, it's a good way to pass the time for some people, then, you know, enjoy that. But if you really want these pieces out a little more quickly, I definitely recommend the sheet. So this is what it pulled out. And again, I wanted to do that live with you so that you could see, but we would still have to do some of the detail work. And you can see the pieces that resisted being pulled out are these, these teeny tiny pieces like I thought. So you would just go ahead and poke these out. But the great news is, is that this is already a sticker. So you could put this straight onto whatever your project is. This is a stunningly beautiful and intricate die. And I did want to spend a few minutes on it. Um, but I just think that if you're gonna put this kind of effort into a die, that it should be the showstopper of the card. It should be the centerpiece. Um, and I haven't turned this into a card yet, but you better believe you're gonna see this as a card. So I'm gonna set this aside for now, but you guys get the point. So let me set this very carefully up here and we'll revisit that later. I'm gonna remove this piece here, but yeah, that actually went really well. I wasn't sure, honestly, how that was gonna go. I know the adhesive sheets are really good for the intricate pieces, um, but sometimes they're, you know, super intricate like that one and you never know how it's gonna turn out. So I'm really happy with the way that that went. Okay, so let's talk about the designer series paper for a minute and then we'll talk about these embellishments and things, the little extras that come with this. So here we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have a six by six paper pack and it's double-sided. And the first thought that comes to my mind is how artistic this is. Um, because you can see these very, um, I, I wanna say obvious, but they're really beautiful. When, you, when you're looking at it at this distance, like when I'm looking at it on camera here, I see the floral. Like I see the pattern and I see the design. 
But when you start looking closer, you see those brush strokes. And sometimes it's not that obvious, right? And on the back, it's even more prominent where you can see all those brush strokes. So that was sort of like my first impression of this paper. So colorful, so spring to me. But the good news is, is that you have multiples of each pattern, which will allow you to make really nice sets of cards. So I'm just gonna piece through, and I did go through this before, but just in case you haven't seen it, I'm gonna go through it again. It was really cool the way that they layered this paint, um, these patterns that they did here. I thought that was really, really pretty. And then we have this one here. I think this is paper that um, would, you know, draw Connor's eye just because it's so colorful, but really, really pretty. I haven't showed him this paper yet. Nice and bright. So you do have some variety here and we have the cools and we have the warms. And again, you can see a floral pattern in that when you're looking at, you know, from a distance, but when you look closer, then you can see those very deliberate, you know, paint strokes. So really interesting paper. I think this is actually like more on the unusual side of paper for Stampin' Up, but you can let me know what your thoughts are on this. I always love this color combo of gray and yellow. I don't know what you guys think of that. This is really pretty. I would make a card with this. This, I love this combination of colors. Um, so I would definitely focus on this. And then my favorite piece, is the piece that I used on this card here, which is what we're gonna, we're gonna turn that into a book binding card. And then let me go ahead and tell you what the coordinating colors are for this paper. So we are working with Balmy Blue, Basic Gray, Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, Night of Navy, Orchid Oasis. And I'm just gonna shout that out because that's what we're using here. We're using Orchid Oasis and Petal Pink for our card stocks on this one. Um, pool Party, which is our ribbon here, Soft Sea Foam, Soft Suede, and Soft Succulent. So for me, the color that really stands out and like, what's it doing in here, is Soft Suede and Basic Gray. But I think you could have a lot of fun with mixing those colors in. So you get 48 sheets. This is cut to six by six already. All right. And then let's talk about our embellishments. And then we have this super fancy um, shimmer paper I have to show you. So here we have the iridescent pastel gems you get 90 of these three colors two sizes is that stunning are they gorgeous oh my gosh I, anything iridescent is totally me so we have that and then we have the ribbon which i was literally just using so here let me get that so this is a grow grain ribbon and the measurement on this is three eighths of an inch so you can see there's a lot going on with this suite two bundles the dsp the gems the ribbon we have a lot of texture here and then we also have this and i have my photopolymer and stamps outside of the ink pad or outside of the its box and it's sticking to all of my paper. How could I do that? Okay, so this is, hang on. I don't wanna tell you the wrong thing. This is the fine shimmer 12 by 12 paper. Um, there are six sheets of this and it's in three colors, fresh freesia, soft succulent, and gold. I feel like I've been using fresh freesia a lot lately and I love soft succulent. Look at that. Oh, stunning. So I feel like I'm not doing this any justice, but there is a very subtle like shimmer, all over shimmer to this paper. Here it is in Fresh Freesia. Oh my goodness. That is stunning in person. Um, let me know if you guys got this. Did you get Fancy Flora or any parts of it? Um, I'm interested to see if that's something people are starting to work with yet. I know we're still in sort of Valentine mode. Oh, and St. Patrick's Day. So I don't know if you guys craft for St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to take a, um, a five-minute break here from Fancy Flora to show you something really quick. Okay. So my Lucky Clover bundle arrived. And 
if I am correct, and I think I am, this clover punch went on back order. And I don't know if it's coming back. Um, but I think I have a solution to that. So for those of you who are interested in this, hang in there. I'm going to be doing um, projects with this upcoming. But I personally love making St. Patrick's Day card. And I have a Patrick in my house. So this is also going to be helpful for that. So anyway, we'll go back to Fancy Flora. But stay tuned. <clears throat> Okay, so that is the suite. That shimmer paper, oh my goodness. So when it comes to our book binding card, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the measurements on this. I wanted to do one in the other direction too. I think what I'm gonna have to do just because schedule wise, trying to get caught up in everything, I'm just, I'm still working through some stuff. So I will hopefully get some more samples for you guys up in the replay. Um, but for now, let's work with this card. So I'm going to get my piece of, I have a couple of pieces of cardstock here. So we're going to use Petal Pink. We're going to use Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to grab Very Vanilla. Okay, very vanilla. I should use the shimmer paper, but I think I'm gonna save that for some other projects. And what we're gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry about the cough. Can't believe I left my cough drops in the car. Okay, so this piece was already cut. This is a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock cut in half. So right now it's at four and a quarter by 11. And we're just gonna score at five and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna score at the five and a half inch mark. This is petal pink. And then we're also gonna score at six and three quarters. Okay. And so you can see we end up with this score line here. And so just to show you here, this now brings this to four and a quarter at this score line. So from here over four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So now we're sort of working with a square size, okay? And then here we are at, with these two, within these two score lines, we're at one and a quarter inch. So for our layers, um, I'm gonna work in the eighth inch layers for now. So this is my Orchid Oasis. I've already cut it to four and one eighth inch. And so now I need to cut it at four and one eighth inch again. Oops. Uh-huh. That was my score line. All right. So we have that piece. And then I it looks a little bit messy here, doesn't it? It looks like I tore that. So I'm going to get a different piece. So I'm gonna cut this at one and one eighth inch. Okay. By four and one eighth. So that'll be our layering piece size. Um, if you have any leftover cards you know, or any leftover designer series paper in the size that you're looking for. In this case, four inches. I'm going to cut a one inch strip here. Okay, so we're going to save that piece and then I'm going to use another one. So we'll get this piece here and then you can decide which part of this pattern you want to cut, but we're going to go to the four inch mark and cut and then we're going to cut again at four and I'm going to try to keep as much of the flowers as I can so we're going to cut here it's always one of those things when you're picking and choosing you know what you want to show up on your card isn't it it's like a little bit of a game with our designer series paper all right so I'm going to set that aside and then we're also going to need a piece of our ribbon and it really only needs to be about four, you know, four and an eighth inch, just long enough to run this piece here. 
and then tuck these edges on the back. If you plan to do that, some people cut just short of that, you know, with a little decorative edge, and then they just adhere it from the front. I usually just tuck my edges, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but you could do whatever works for you. So we're gonna cut a piece of that. And then from here, um, this is as far as I got with designing the card. The other piece that I need is another four by four piece of the Very Vanilla, and that's gonna be for the inside of our card. So I'm gonna cut that piece. Just gonna do a four by four. And we'll set that aside. And then what I was thinking was, should I just do a sentiment and let the, you know, the designer series paper kind of be the star? Or should I stamp um, some flowers? And I did do some ahead of time, so we could do that too, but for this card with this paper, I love it so much. I'm not sure if I wanna to do too much of the stamping. So let's take a look and see. But what we can do here is we can start to assemble our card. Now, I've seen a couple of different ways that people did book binding cards. And one of the really cute things is if you just wanna do your adhesive on either end, you can basically create a pocket and tuck like a little gift card or a little gift or something right in there if you want to. Now, I'm not going to be doing that today. So I am just going to seal this up and, you know, turn it into this book binding. But it's totally up to you, however you would want to do that for your card. I, I, I thought that that was a really cute idea. Okay, so I am going to switch over into voiceover mode now. I'm also going to speed up the video slightly at this point. I do like to let people know, um, because I do receive comments on this, that if you do want to see the full length replay at regular speed, I do keep those on my Facebook page. Um, Stamping with heart, H-A-R-T for heart, uh, because that is my last name. Um, the full replays are always left available over there on my Facebook page. I do edited replays here, tutorial only for those of you who want to craft along with me um, or to help keep the video at a, um, a, a lesser amount, like a shorter video length because with YouTube, it's just a little bit different than with Facebook, right? Like when we're in a live format, we're hanging out. And then of course, when we're doing these pre-recorded videos, I want everybody to sort of have their option um, for what they prefer. So right now at this point, all we're doing is we're gluing our panels down. And if you have um, seen my videos before, this is something that I commonly like to do where I tuck the edges of the ribbon behind my designer series paper layer and then I glue the panel down. Um, that's an optional thing, but that is always something that I like to do just to try to keep the clean lines. Some people will actually trim the ribbon, you know, just before the edge so that they have like a decorative edge on their ribbon. Um, some people will actually tie a whole piece of ribbon around the whole card uh, if you want to do that on your book binding area. I just think that that uses up so much ribbon and I like to use as much product as I possibly can. Now here I wanted to show you what it would look like if you wanted to add some of your stamped flowers from the two-tone flora bundle. I decided to showcase the designer series paper on these cards. I thought that this paper and that the patterns were absolutely beautiful. It's a simpler way to start with a fun fold card as well, but you can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. So if you love that two-step stamping, if you want to add some of those floral pieces and just make it even more spectacular, go for it. But for those of us who are maybe new to fun fold cards or to the book binding card, I think that showcasing the designer series paper is a nice, easy, simple way to start with a fun fold card. Now this is that fine shimmer paper that comes in three colors. You would get two sheets of each if you were just purchasing this paper, or this is actually part of the Fancy Flora Suite as well. And what I like to do is just kind of hold my die up to the paper and then just trim that part off, particularly with specialty paper, because I am going to try to use every single inch of that paper that I possibly can. So um, I'm just cutting these strips down and then we're going to use our stamp and cut and emboss machine to cut these. Uh, the fancy label dies, or I keep calling them labels, you guys, the um, something fancy dies. <clears throat> the something fancy dies are compatible with the mini machine. 
So I'm using my full size because you can see I'm kind of doubling up on the amount that I'm cutting at one time. And if you are um, sort of an efficiency crafter and you want to cut, you know, four, five, six dies at a time or in a single pass, then you might want the full size um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. But if you like to work with the mini or if you're new to tools or if you just got your starter kit and you got that mini and that incredible offer, then just know that the something fancy dies and the um, all of the flower pieces with the exception of that very large die um, in the two-tone flora will also fit. That full-size piece would have to go through the full-size machine, but all of the ones that cut out the stamped images, those will fit. Um, so you can see here uh, my table is a bit of a hot mess, and you can let me know. Are you a clean crafter or a hot mess crafter? I am the messiest crafter around. I do not even have the nerve to show you guys how crazy my craft room looks right now. But what I'm doing here is I'm testing my layout. So I do this a lot where I will cut multiple pieces and multiple colors and then I I will just start, it's almost like putting together a puzzle where I just start laying down pieces and trying to find what I think is either the best positioning or the best shape for it and the best color. I really loved the soft succulent fine shimmer with um, these cards. I just thought that it tied together so beautifully. Now, I absolutely love the gold shimmer, um, but on this card, I felt like I wanted a little bit of a cooler tone personally. So now we're just going to decide on the sentiment that we want. So this is one of the great things about having a, a two bundle situation where one full set of stamps are all sentiments and one full set of stamps are all florals. You have so many choices. Um, I wanted to make this a sympathy card. Now, sympathy cards, in my opinion, are one of the most difficult cards to make, but I think that the font on this is really nice. They call it more of like a modern font was how they, you know, Stampin' Up! described it. Um, <clears throat> but the script is still very easy to read, at least I think so. This is Orchid Oasis Ink, by the way, on very vanilla cardstock. And I did want to incorporate some floral. I wanted you to see what it would look like to stamp the flower. Um, and I think, you know, now looking back in the replay, I would have just left it at the flower. I stamped in a... Um, a leaf and I should have, I should have just done that as either a separate piece. Um, but you, you know, you live and you learn. I should have done it either masking or I should have done it as a separate die piece. But anyway, um, you can see this is a two-step stamp. So I used petal pink for the base. I'm using Calypso coral for the detail part of these flowers. And it's really soft and really beautiful. And it's a nice way to incorporate some of the stamping without it, you know, taking away from the designer series paper, which has a lot of floral element design going on on its own. And depending on the pattern that you choose, you have options that do not have floral patterns to them. If you want it to look more on the artistic side or more on sort of like a, you know, a single or a two tone uh, piece of paper, you know, um, design. <clears throat> so I am using my Stampin' Dimensionals here. I wanted to position the more square or rectangle, I should say, the more rectangle looking dies in the center of one of the cards and then on the other I placed it lower where it was just below that floral pattern so just depending on where you cut um, into your designer series paper it might change the appearance of the, de the design slightly and that will happen on any paper where you have you know florals going in different directions now here, I decided to add a bow. I don't always do this because a bow is pretty dimensional. And for those of you who like to have flat cards or you don't want the extra bulk or you don't want the extra postage, then just omit this step. You do not have to do a bow. But I did one card with and I did one card without. And I absolutely loved with how the bow looked on that book binding part. I just thought that that was such a finishing, beautiful finishing touch. So if you're making a, a book binding card like this for Valentine's Day, and maybe it's going into a little gift package or you're handing it to somebody and you don't have to worry about postage or the envelope being bulky, then I, I would say absolutely 100% add your bows, add your ribbons. It's so pretty and floral and just so girly and so pretty. Um, 
Um, but if you want to keep it a little more streamlined, if you want to avoid that, then you can see on the sympathy card that we create, um, which when you're making a sympathy card, I do think that it's important to be mindful that it's not like overly decorated. Um, you know, it's really more about the message and you want it to be pretty, of course, but, um, you also want it to be sort of, um, more about the message than about how many, you know, rhinestones or gems you've used. So I really do try to go light on the embellishments when I'm doing um, like a concern or a sympathy card. Now, if on the other hand, it's a card that's supposed to be frilly or cheerful or, you know, feminine or something like that, then of course, add your bows, add all of your glimmer and shimmer. Um, but I think that this fine shimmer paper is such a great way to add color like that and to add a little um, elegant touch without it being over the top, particularly if you're working with um, sympathy cards. Now, one thing that I do want to mention to you is I'm showing you guys the celebration brochure right now. In February, Stampin' Up! announced more options for celebration rewards, and that is separate from what you're seeing in this brochure. So I'm going to pop a picture up of what the newly added rewards are that you can choose in the month of February. Celebration ends February 28th. So if you're not familiar, celebration is a way that you can either shop and save with Stampin' And up. If you spend a qualifying amount, you can earn free rewards out of this brochure or with the additional options they've just added. Or you can save when you join Stampin' Up! in February. And the savings are absolutely incredible. I will include a link here to a video if you would like to learn more about it. I actually filmed a separate video on all of the benefits of joining Stampin' Up! during celebration because there are options when you join. And no matter which option you choose, you're saving at least $76 in product value and free shipping on that kit. All right. Thank you so much. If you're interested in registering for my class, please click click the link below or leave me a comment and I will follow up with you. All right, stay tuned for the next video. Bye-bye.